everyone and welcome to the latest edition of Jack's Parks TV. I'm Pam Roman and I am so excited to bring you today's show from our brand new William Sheffield Regional Park here in North Jacksonville. We'll be bringing you highlights of the park throughout the show so stay with us. I'm also excited to introduce to you our newest co-host, Amelie Camo. She is an intern with us from the University of North Florida and she'll be here with us through August. Right now she's joining Garrett Teague at the football field. Garrett, Amelie? Thanks Pam. Hey everybody, I'm Garrett Teague. And I'm Ahmed Kamin. And we're here at the spot where earlier this month, Mayor Brown and others cut the ribbon to celebrate the opening of this 336 acre park. And I was there to capture all the excitement. Let's take a look. Hundreds of parents and kids showed up June 1st to see Mayor Alvin Brown and other dignitaries cut the ribbon to celebrate the opening of William Sheffield Regional Park. Afterwards, the mayor talked about its significance to the community. So I think the city investing $4 million uh, to this project uh, is going to continue to make uh, Jacksonville a great place to live, work, and raise a family. And this park is, a, is, a, is a, an example of that. Sheffield Park didn't just open overnight. The city and several organizations around Jacksonville have been hard at work since 2003 to make this park a reality. Greenscape and Clara White Mission volunteers donated and planted trees. The Cash Station volunteers cleared more than two miles of trails. An Oceanway Sports Association helped prep the fields and will help organize youth athletics at the park. Well, you know, the government can't do it alone, so we need that public-private partnership. You know, the business community, the civic community, everybody investing in their quality of life in our city, and that's, that's what this is all about. And it's also a vision come true for City Councilman Ray Holt. I'm just happy to be able to finally open um, a small portion of, of what we hope in the future will be a, a major regional park with all kinds of different athletic fields. Uh, it's a very exciting day. Right now, you can come out and experience nature on the trails, kayak across the pond, or bring your pool for some fishing. All wonderful examples of Mayor Brown's People Parks Connection. We have the largest urban park system in the country. I want to make sure we have the best park system in the country. And so continuing to invest and work with the private sector and the not-for-profit community to continue to do well. Sheffield is one of hundreds of parks worth getting excited about. Visit us at jacksparks.com for more information. Another great amenity of Sheffield Park is the kayak launch site, where you can paddle out and enjoy the water. Jack's Parks has over two dozen kayak launch sites that we feature in our series, Kayak Jacksonville. The next segment we have coming up tours the downtown waterways. Hey guys, I'm Joe Crespi, and I'm with First Coast Outfitters. I'm here today with Jack's Parks at the St. John's Marina Boat Ramp, where we're going to be doing some paddling and exploring downtown on the St. John's River. But before that, we're going to go over some safety tips. No matter where you paddle, it's important to always check the tide and weather reports before hitting the water. Some of the things that you want to make sure you've got on your safety checklist are going to be a communication device, whether it be a cell phone or VHF radio, a personal flotation device, a whistle, and a float plan. Letting somebody know when and where you're going to be going and when you plan on returning. Alright, let's hit the water. When launching at the St. John's Marina, there's a couple things to keep in mind take precaution getting in or out of your boat due to the fact that it can be slippery here at times. The best time to go paddling downtown is during the tide change, also known as slack tide. That's when you're going to find the least amount of water moving. At times the tides can be very strong downtown so planning ahead and checking those tide reports is going to be crucial to having a great time on the river. Another thing to keep in mind when paddling in downtown Jacksonville is going to be boat traffic. And particularly during holidays and events, you'll find heavier than normal boat traffic and activity. It's important as a paddler that you're aware of your surroundings and keep an eye out for some of the larger boats. Once you're downtown and on the river, you'll be rewarded with beautiful scenic views of our downtown Jacksonville, including the landing, Friendship Fountain, the Main Street Bridge, and Eberbank Field. You'll also have the opportunity to check out two of Jacksonville's most historic creeks. One being Hogan's Creek, which is just east of the Main Street Bridge, and the other being McCoy's Creek, which is just west of the Acosta Bridge. 
Thanks for coming paddling with us downtown. For more information on water trails, hiking trails, or camping in Jacksonville, check out jacksparks.com or find us on Facebook or YouTube. I've moved over to one of the ponds at Sheffield Park. It's a reminder of all the water we have in and around Jacksonville. It's great to enjoy our waters, but it's also important to make sure you and your family are safe. One solution, waterproof Jacksonville. Jacksonville can get pretty hot during the summer, so most people like to cool off with a refreshing dip in the pool or maybe spend a day at the beach. But with that, it's also important to make sure you and your family are staying safe while having fun. To help you do that, Mayor Brown has been working on Waterproof Jacksonville, a countywide campaign to prevent accidental drownings by teaching people how to swim and be safer around water. It's very important to learn how to swim so that you can enjoy all the stuff that the city of Jacksonville offers and plus it will increase your quality of life. Jacksonville is one of the leading cities in the nation for accidental drownings. That's why Mayor Brown is encouraging organizations, businesses, and the community as a whole to create opportunities for people to learn how to swim and be safer around water. Partnerships are an essential part of the program's success. The, the really neat thing about this particular public-private partnership is that the city isn't asking these organizations for money to help pay for programs, the city's saying, give us your time, give us your talent to help these kids and even uh, adults learn how to swim to make our city safer. More than a dozen organizations have partnered with this initiative. Taking the lead is Safe Kids of Northeast Florida. I think it's great that Mayor Brown is putting some emphasis in our community on water safety on, on, and on drowning prevention. This drowning is the leading killer of children in the state of Florida under the age of five. So when he's getting involved in this, it's making it more of a community-wide effort. I think swimming lessons should um, always be a part of a comprehensive drowning prevention strategy. So even though Jack's Parks is doing its best to help you stay safe, it's up to you to follow the rules and take advantage of all the opportunities. We hope you have a happy and healthy summer. Waterproof Jacksonville is partnering with Safe Kids Northeast Florida and participating agencies include Beaches Aquatic Center, School of Swimming, Swimming Safari Swim School Incorporated, University of North Florida, Garner Pools, Safety First, Amberjack Swim Club, and the YMCA. We're on the trails here at Sheffield Park. In fact, Jack's Parks has more than 265 trails for folks to enjoy. But whether it's a trail walk or other outdoor activity, our park naturalist, Dean Schubert, has some surefire tips to help you stay safe and have fun this summer. Welcome. I'm Jean Schubert, Parks Naturalist Supervisor with Jack's Parks, and we're here today at Tilly K. Fowler Regional Park in the Nature Center. This is where we hold school field trips for all ages and do public programs as well. This is our latest edition of Nature Notes, where we introduce you to the wonders of wildlife. I want you to know that I've been in the woods all my life, and I feel pretty comfortable no matter where I go. But some people, they're a little bit uneasy about what kind of plants and animals they might encounter. So today's edition of Nature Notes is going to introduce you to some of these. So let's take a look. One of the major things you'll encounter in the woods that can be a problem for many people is poison ivy. Now we've all heard that saying, leave the three, let it be, but what they're really referring to are the three leaflets that make up the one leaf. That leaf may be bright green in the springtime and turn red in the fall and be completely gone by the wintertime. So one way to recognize poison ivy year-round is to look for the hairy vines. Those hairy vines will climb up to 100 feet up into the tree. The best way to avoid poison ivy is avoid those hairy vines and stay on the trail. Another thing you might encounter in the woods are ticks. These are tiny members of the arachnid class, and they wait around on blades of grass for the passing animals and people. So they'll grab on, and that's how they get their nourishment. One way to avoid them is to wear light-colored clothing so you can see them more easily. Also, you might want to tuck your pant legs into your socks if you're wearing long pants. If you happen to get a tick on you, one of the best ways to remove it is not with big tweezers, but with your pointiest little tweezers. 
and grab them right at the head to pull them off. Truth be told, even though I roam thousands of acres of woods in my job, I get more ticks on me in my very own yard. Cute little guys. What you're going to run into in the woods way more often than ticks are going to be flying insects. Now some people's first reaction is to swat at them. I don't recommend that. That might make them angry. You especially don't want to do that because many of those flying insects might be wasps. We have more than a thousand species of wasps in Florida. The largest wasp we have is the cicada killer. It doesn't bother people very often. Its major focus is to find a nice cicada so it can lay its egg in there so the larva will have something to eat when it hatches out. A wasp you may find closer to home are the paper wasps. They chew up plant material to make the paper for their nests. There's different kinds too. Look at all the layers of paper that they make and all the different colors are in there based on the plant material that they're chewing up. Here's another wasp nest. It is not a pinata. So remember, when you're outdoors, be respectful of the wildlife and enjoy your walks. And if you don't feel comfortable taking a walk alone, go to jacksparks.com and look up our many environmental education programs. We offer walks of all different varieties every month in many locations. So until then, I'll see you in the parks. Thanks for joining us on the latest edition of JPTV. Before we sign off, I'd like to give a shout out to the other interns working with me this summer. Future world-renowned photographer, Andrew Smith. Design diva darling, Amy Roberts. Social media guru, Haley Dunning. Modern cartographer and communications wonder, Alyssa Bourgoin. And of course, our vivacious videographer and co-host, Emil Kamel. Make sure you check out more of these videos and episodes at jacksparkstv.com. And for more information about all your parks, go to jacksparks.com. And as always, we want to hear what you have to say, so please connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube, and our latest site, Instagram. We'll see you here next time, but until then, we'll see you in the parks. And communications wonder, Alyssa Borgoyne. 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 World-renowned, world, what future world-renowned teammates the other interns working with me this summer? Ah. <laughs> Every time. Ah. Future world renowned photographer. Got it. Okay. Ah.